Good morning. I'm actually here uh, on time and live today. The computer was very uh, nice and kind to me today. So I hope uh, you're getting uh, me live here. Oh, good. Good deal. Hello. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, Kip. Uh, good deal. Good to see you or see your words. <laughs> Jason, good morning. My computer is doing some weird things still. I hope I'm doing okay. You guys can still miss. Hello, Rolanda. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Yeah, last week was kind of interesting. I have to tell you, um, it's at home, obviously. This time I get to be here, so maybe no interruptions today. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I woke up at 825 last week. I think I was in like uh, coming out of my um, COVID uh hibernation or something so I got everything together and was on time with that no problem I had everything together but and then the computer wouldn't work uh, then it asked I, I it did all these weird funky things last week it was just kind of weird so um, I appreciate those that had a great deal of patience uh, while we were getting that together so what do you think about the snow today that was exciting um, I took a picture. I always usually take a picture of the house when it for the first snow. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. Um, I prefer the snow. Much met. Uh, good morning, Debbie. Much more than the ice. But um, got here today, and the uh, sidewalk a little slippery today. I didn't uh, didn't fall on my face or my rump, but uh, that's okay. But uh, yeah, wow. <clears throat> Heard rumor. I haven't checked the weather that it's going to be warmer again this week, but I don't know what warm means um, now that we're getting so close to November. I was telling folks, um, it's been so weird with uh, all the lockdown and all shelter in place and all the things that when we finally got back to church and as we're going right now, it feels eerily reminiscent of last March when uh, we were going into spring, but then being put in shelter in place. So it, you know, it's good to see everybody. Good morning, Kimmy. Hope things are going well for you. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about Thanksgiving. You know, it's, a lot of times we do like a flyover over Thanksgiving, but I, I'm really excited about Thanksgiving this year. I was, you know, our house is always in some state of project. <laughs> good morning, Gene. Uh, and trying to do something. I'm not very handy. I can paint, though, so I've been painting uh walls not painting but uh, <laughs> um and so uh getting things kind of and so getting ready to, i want to i was thinking about putting out our christmas tree i know that sounds crazy but putting out our christmas tree and putting it kind of make a thanksgiving tree and decorating up like with thanksgiving not necessarily with turkey legs or turkeys or <laughs> anything like that but just i thought man i'd like to hit that day you know season of thanksgiving before we hop right into the the biggest season of the year good morning deb Good morning. I, oops, I think. I, good morning, Gary. I see Rolanda. You don't like snow too much. I uh, know. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing I always say. You know, I came from. Good morning, Ronald and Lafon. One thing. Uh, uh, where I used to live in Southern California, and uh, where I lived in the high desert area from seven till probably twenty or so. For moving back here and and i and i've shared before but I, I i love the seasons back here i really do i, I really love being a, being able to have when we do have them four distinct seasons i know sometimes they're like a couple weeks worth before it jumps into summer or a couple weeks worth of fall before it jumps right into winter but the last couple of years it's, it's been interesting we've had you know pretty mild winters and and uh and it's been really nice to enjoy what that has to offer good morning cheryl Oh, let's see. Rod has had frostbite. Mm. Can't do cold. Yeah, no frostbite. Don't like that. Good morning, Ann. Oh, it's good to see everybody. Well, I thought it'd be to get a different area today for before we start for <clears throat> our message. Good morning, Don. And I thought, you know, the subway. You know, you know, <clears throat> for those that maybe are not in, it, haven't been down in kids' church, <clears throat> we we set up the room with different areas of the city. And 
and what we always tell kids throughout the year is, you know, God with us, God within us, and God, you know, when we have God in us and God with us amongst us as believers, the importance of going out into the whole world to share the gospel and be the people God's called us to be, each one of us unique. And um, each area is kind of just represents that everybody has different giftings. Um, but the subway, where we do most of our teaching and everything, especially now with our uh, COVID situation. Good morning, Doug. Good to see you, Barb and Mary. And um, we the subway's idea is going out, heading out, and the idea that as believers we are to go into the world and in, in our even our community. It starts there, obviously, in our homes, in the community to to share the gospel and reach out. Now, of course, many of you probably already know. Um, Nick has taken this literally and figuratively, <laughs> and will be leaving grace, but to go serve God in an area of, of need. And man, uh, we're excited for them, uh, but man, we're going to miss them too. And that, that's the thing. You know, um, I'm old enough to know the old, older song from uh, Michael W. Smith, you know, a friend is a friend forever when the Lord's the Lord of them. And certainly, um, I eagerly anticipate the great things that uh, God will do through Nick and Ashley and the family. But I also have to be honest, I will miss them. Um, but it, it, you know, it's representative of the, I don't know which way to point, representative of the subway. Good morning, Wade, of uh, the subway that, you know, he, he's being faithful. Good morning, Joyce, Shirley. He's being faithful to the call. And what can you say, you know? And yeah, that's an inspiration is what I say. And one last thing I'll say before I jump in there. You know, I remember me and Nick, when he first started here, um, we ate lunch at Chipotle together and we we're just talking. And I remember he was going back to school and I was thinking about it. And before things changed for us and Kim went back to school, you know, uh, he was talking about how we tithe our time even. And, and, and he was looking at, you know, his, his pursuit of God and through education and the sacrifice that of time that that was given, he was looking at it being a, a tithe and an offering to God. And that just so impressed me, but even from the get-go with him. And I would say over the course of time, what a blessing he's been in, in the sense of his love and pursuit for God. He's inspired this old dog, you know. <laughs> you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I, I'm a living example. So it, it's great. So we, again, um, so yeah, um, today... I'm going to be talking about a verse, I'll set my notes up a little bit, a verse that uh, I've been thinking about a lot here lately, and and uh, was excited about sharing it, really, for the last couple of weeks. Um, and we're going to be talking about um, John 3.16, and, and and the verse immediately following, obviously, John 3.17. And uh, I've just been excited about sharing that today, so I'm going to, going to jump right in into prayer right at this moment. Uh, I don't know what situations that life might uh, be bringing your way right now, um, but I know as life is here on this earth that sometimes it can be difficult and a challenge, but I know we serve a God that works through all those things. And, uh, and, and the thing that is so great is that he gives us each other uh, to walk through life with. So I just want to offer this time to God and to thank him for the time that we have together um, even in this cold weather, um, I want to thank God that we have our, our relationships along with relationships that we have with him. So let's go ahead and uh, start off right and start off in prayer with God. Dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you so much, Lord, uh, for who you are. I thank you for the calling you put on each of our lives, that you give each of us equal opportunity, equal opportunity to serve you that you've made us each unique with each uh, a different gift, some more than others, that you only ask of us to use the things you've given us for you. And thank you for the privilege of being able to have something, to be able to be part of something much bigger than us, much bigger than us. Thank you for your trust to work through us. And I thank you that as you work through us, you change us too to make us more like you. And so God, today as we read your word, and we talk, or I talk, and they listen. <laughs> God, I just pray that your your living word would change our lives. 
that we would come out of this today with different thoughts and, 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 and ideas that can be used to further advance your kingdom. And I certainly want to thank you, as I mentioned already, for Nick and Ashley. Uh, thank you for their family. I thank you for the inspiration that they are to us. We do pray for their well-being and uh and and we just i can only imagine the wonderful things that you're going to do through them and it's in your name we pray amen all righty john three sixteen. you know it's one of the verses i got to learn uh was able to learn growing up uh both in church and a group called awana back in the 70s and I remember going to Awana and the handbooks that we had, we did a lot of verse memorization and it was one of the staples. It was the, you know, the cream de la crumb, you know, if you will, of memory verses. And so I'm just going to state it out here really quick and, and we're going to talk about it. Um, you know, John 3.16, we know it by heart. We can say it out, you say it out loud or in your mind at home, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, it's been said that this verse pretty much sums up the whole Bible. Well, in a way it does. <laughs> the, the scope and the mission. But, uh, you know, God's word, his living word is filled with so many truths and so many things that inspire me daily. You know, I absolutely love the story behind this verse. You know, a couple years ago, we got to focus on it pretty good in uh, our study at, with kids. You know, it comes out the third book of John. We find that Jesus would speak these words to a man named Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee. Nicodemus, as you know, many of you know, he had come to Jesus in the dark of night. And he was compelled uh, by the truth God. In the cover of darkness, Nicodemus, he, he would inquire of the Lord. And Jesus, as we've seen even in the devotion of Sharon, he knows, he knows our hearts. He knew the motivation of Nicodemus' heart and the condition of his soul. And he would provide him the truth that would speak to generations to come. You know, the, the the hour of night would, in a way, symbolically define the darkness of sin and hopelessness. And Jesus' response to Nicodemus would define the power of God's truth and mission as a light into the world. You know, Jesus had indeed come to bring life into the world. His mission was defined by a, by, you know, by a creator that deeply loves us. Nicodemus's heart was, was, I believe, ripe for change. And in his communication with Christ, he humbled himself by asking very truthful, open questions to him. Yesterday, first service, a young boy by the name of Shepherd, cool, good, great family. And he asked some really deep questions, pretty big questions. And I just, I love seeing that in kids. When they have a hunger and they want to know something bigger about God. And I just, I told him yesterday, I said, and some of the questions he asked, I didn't have an answer to. You know, like, when did God make heaven? Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> when did he make heaven? And how long did that was heaven in place before he created the world? But he had these truthful questions, and he asked with a heart that was right. And I told him, you know, as he grows older in life, he's going to have more questions. And I encouraged him to always ask the questions of God, because God, through his word, through people much smarter in the word than I am, and others will reveal himself in greater ways to him. And do not ever not ask questions of God, because God is such a great God that we, we will chase after him throughout our whole life and not understand him completely until we are one day face to face. But it reminds me of what Nicodemus, he was trained 
And he came to God and revealed his heart by asking these simple questions that really were inside him. And I can only imagine the sense of urgency that Nicodemus must have felt. He came to Jesus, I believe, by his own volition. He, he volunteered himself for the job. And the questions of his heart, I believe, compelled him not to rest. And Jesus, in his communication with Nicodemus, you know, he would, he would reveal his heart condition. What Jesus would reveal would reveal to Nicodemus the state of his heart. And that's the power of God. <laughs> you know, in his word, does the same thing to us. And Nicodemus, as a teacher of Israel, he had no answers. And the truth spoken by Jesus would be light to Nicodemus. Just as much as the light that was in the darkness that he was standing in talking to Jesus, this truth that he would speak to him would be a light to his soul and would begin a transformation within him. His heart, you know, his heart that sought the truth that presented himself to God would be met by a Savior's words that would, by grace, reveal hope and light to his soul. And I just love how God does that. I think about uh, the beauty of a sunset and a sunrise, the things that God does, and how poetic and, and artistic he is, you know, that he would take this dark of night in this situation and speak the truth in a way that we can, 2,000 years later, look at it and reflect on it. In John 3.16, Jesus speaks of God's motivation for the mission. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. What about this world? How would they receive his gift? How would they receive it today? How would they receive the gift back in that day? Open hearts? open arms, you know, now, you know, they, they wouldn't receive it that way. And some would, of course, as we read about, but many would receive it with raised arms and raised voices that would shout out to crucify him. I was listening to a devotion or on a uh, radio thing the other day, and they talked about that nobody put God, put Son of Jesus, Jesus, Son of God, on the cross. I mean, without the will of the Father. God put Jesus on the cross for the sacrifice of our sins. The atonement of our sins. That's how greatly he loved us. He put his one and only Son. Jesus knew when he's talking to, to Nicodemus, and, and his, he knew our, the state of our spiritual darkness and that the light would shine even brighter. Jesus knew the encounter with Nicodemus would change his life. Jesus would reveal to Nicodemus his role as Savior. And I love, I, I would say that verse 17 could potentially be one of the most overlooked verses in the Bible. Because even when I look back in Iwana, as I mentioned earlier, and I memorized John 3.16. Later on in life, I would see John 3.17 and memorize this too. Where, as it states, where God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Not only did God take his own son and put him on the cross for atonement of his sin, but he did it because he didn't want the world to face the condemnation of sin. He wanted to rescue us, which is incredible. Jesus revealed to Nicodemus he was not a mere teacher. He was, in fact, the Son of God, the very Savior of the world. And these two verses are, are, are literally a ray of sunlight S-O-N, you know, and light for our spiritual darkness. They define to us and for us 
you know, uh, as it did to Nicodemus 2,000 years ago, again, the role and mission of Christ. We know with certainty in Scripture by, that by receiving the words in faith, the light of God's truth can transform and break the bonds of spiritual darkness and emptiness. A few weeks back, I talked about miracles. You know, they, they come in all shapes and sizes. They really do. But perhaps the greatest of miracles, I would say, is a miracle of a transformed heart and soul. Sorry. Sorry. You know, a heart by its own product must yield itself by faith and relinquish this, its independence, and recognize its dependence upon the Creator, the one who first loved and sacrificed so we can spend an eternity with Him. John 3.16 and 17 is a powerhouse in scripture. As I've said, it's a light into the darkness. It's a tool to illuminate, illuminate, you know, <clears throat> eliminate our sin and to illuminate and bring the sun's light into the world. You know, today you may have a loved one that is in darkness. You may have a friend a co-worker. You may have a friend or someone you know like Nicodemus that has a sense of a spiritual need but does not know the entire truth. Or maybe still, by their own definition, their own definition of Christ, by their, they have, they've defined God in their own experiences and but have defined him in their incorrect way. Whatever the case may be, they need to have God's truth and God's light and His Word. God's light, as it says, God's Word is a two-edged sword that pierces the darkness. And the light that it brings is seen no matter how weary the soul. Darkness you know, in kids' church, many times we'll do a demonstration with a candle. And when you have darkness, when it's pure dark, that candle still shines bright. So we're going to wrap up things today. And I just want to put this thought out to you. As I mentioned earlier, I'm sitting in front of the subway. God has called us. He's, he's partnered with us. If we have made a decision to follow Christ, he's partnered with us. And he's given us the truth to bring that light into the world. And I encourage you, for the people that you know, that you would reach and give that light to them. I was talking with a friend of mine the other day, you know, as I get older, and I realize the things, and I, it's, a, it's a continual process. As Paul has talked about working out our salvation, though we have, the price has been paid for our salvation, we receive that as a free gift, but we continually work on this journey we have of life here. And I realized the two, two things that the enemy cannot take away from us. Our commitment to Christ and our prayer. And I don't know where you're at, too. You know, you may have found yourself older now, too, where you feel you have nothing to offer God. Don't believe that lie. You have prayer and your commitment. Those two things change the world. So we're going to pray today, and we're going to pray. I know that these things get put out there on Facebook and <clears throat> and, and, and uh, gets put on YouTube some, and we're going to pray for a life that might be transformed to you. And I pray today, we're going to pray here for the loved ones you have in your life that need to know Jesus as your Savior, that need to know Him as Father. 
and Lord over their life. So let's pray. Thank you for the time today. Let us pray together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that it's through him we can approach your throne. It is through him we can have a relationship with you. First hand, first person to the creator of this universe, creator of light, creator of hope, creator of peace. He gives us the hope of eternity. And Lord, today I pray for those loved ones out there, those co-workers, the neighbors, acquaintances, there's a world that needs your light, needs your truth to pierce the darkness of the lies they may have in their mind. They need hope, eternal hope that only you can offer. So Lord, I, I even pray for those that may watch, who watch this. And Lord, as they have listened, that there is only one way to heaven. That is by recognizing that you indeed are the creator of the world, that you sent your son, that by asking of forgiveness and committing our life to you, you will walk through us, with us. And so I pray that there's anyone out there that has come to cross us in some way, that they would yield, that they've been wrestling, that they would yield that battle to you and that life to you. God, equip my friends on the other side of the internet today, my church family. Continue to equip them, give them strength, put a barrier between the enemy that would speak lies into their hearts and minds and make them feel they're not capable of sharing your light. God, give them the strength and the passion to share your light, your life-giving truth to others. God, thank you for your gift. Thank you for the hope that is ours. Thank you for your leading. We love you with all that we are, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for those that have set, shared such kind words to our family and being able to serve and given the, the role that we have here. Uh, and the privilege that it is. And thank you for being our church family. We love you, and uh, we want you to have a, you know, a, a great day. And as always, we ask you to you know, say to you is God bless and to go bless. We love you and have a great day. Bye.